So let me start this off with a prayer. Um, Father God, in Jesus' name, I come to you and I pray for the Holy Spirit to um, lead and guide me. Um, help me not to say things that are um, irrelevant. Um, help me to say things that will be beneficial to your kingdom, your people, and your purposes. Um, I pray for the individual watching this, God, that they would get something from it. Not just get something from it, but like hold on to whatever it is that they're getting. Uh, Holy Spirit, lead and guide us, God. Help us to be patient and wait on you for whatever um, we may be waiting on. And I thank you in Jesus' name. So, um, you know, like uh, part of the reason why I have not done things is, you know, sometimes you can drift from God, not that you're all the way out of the presence of God, but you can drift away. I compare it to um, you being on sea and there's a, you know, a lighthouse. You can still see the lighthouse, but you're not as close to the lighthouse as you would like to be. Um, I'm also working with uh, my computer's being fixed, so I don't even know how this is going to work. Like uh, my notes are on um, a phone. But really, this is about, um, you know, just waiting on God, like how to properly wait on God. And, uh, you know, first things first is, you know, the f main thing that we do is usually complain, you know, and uh, a lot of times, you know, our complaints turn into repentance after it happens. You know, because we realize how insignificant our complaints were and we don't realize how God worked in the process of waiting. Um, so we feel, you know, like, oh man, I messed up. I didn't take advantage of that time that I had while I was waiting. And, uh, you know, we can lose focus on God. We can, you know, there's a ton of things that can happen that are wrong, but, um, you know, I'm going to try to do a series on how to wait on God, but this is more of just like an introduction. Um, and I picked Psalm 106 because it talks about the Israelites in the wilderness and the best commentary for the Bible is the Bible. However, I don't suggest not using commentaries. And if you do need to, you know, know some good ones to look up or um, get, um, let me know. I can help you. Also, esor.net has tons of free things. Um, and it, you can download it on anything that you have. Uh, but God gives you like a little bit of intimate detail about the children of Israel and the Red Sea experience in Psalm 106. You know, and everything that we have, we can see, um, generally we can see ourselves doing it or we can see how we've responded to that and changed our perspective on waiting on God. Uh, however, at the same time, you see God talking about the Red Sea in verses 8 through 12. Um, but you see a change in the character of the Israelites, and we can learn from that today. Because remember Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, he said, now all these things are written things in the Old Testament, even things in the New Testament. And they happened to them for examples for us. And they were written for our admonition. So all these things that we have, um, we see how God works in the Old Testament. We see how God corrects, how God changes, God's warnings. You know, all of it's necessary, even if you're not a, a, a um, I would say, an avid Old Testament reader. Like, there's invaluable lessons in the Old Testament that teach you how God works in your life as opposed to, you know, the, uh, uh, how, how could I put it? I would say like the Old Testament is more of like a, a biography and the New Testament is more of like the, the instructions on a way to live like Christ. Um, you know, it's got everything in it. So don't neglect the Old Testament because it seems um, very intimidating if you're studying the Bible. Like I said, a Bible commentary can help a bunch exponentially. Um, but verse 13 is key. And, you know, we can't overlook these things because when you read and study the Bible, sometimes it's, sometimes it's not the whole 
you know, the whole chapter that, that, that God really wants you to focus on. Sometimes it could be one or two um, verses, or sometimes it could be one or two phrases, maybe even one or two words. And, you know, you can kind of see that here. It says, they soon forgot his works. So they went through the Red Sea. They saw God do a miracle, um, something that nobody else could have done. Um, and they knew it was God. That's what the interesting thing is. They knew exactly who did it. They knew it was God. because They did the little, uh, you know, the little uh, triumphant entry um, through the process of all that. Um, and I would get into that, but I'm not going to keep this long. I'll save the long ones for later. Um, however, you know, seeing all that God had done, you know, Satan comes in and he's got the IV of anesthesia. And we have that problem too, because we can, we can see God work, but I've noticed that Satan has this, uh, this tactic that he does and you forget what God has done and you begin to look at what you can do or complain about what God hasn't done. And... Those are um, improper motives. I would even say, you know, when we're in that situation, we're like kind of like left to our own devices. You know, I have a son and um, he's very good, very, very good. Um, however, you know, if I leave him unattended, um, you know, it's not that he's bad, but he just gets into his own devices and he can hurt himself. And I realized like that's exactly like us with God. I mean, of course, God's looking over us, you know, and he's attentive to us. But sometimes we're not attentive to God. Like I can say Hudson and he's just so focused on doing whatever he wants to do that um, he doesn't necessarily respond immediately. So, you know, the rest is, you know, whatever I do, you know, like, hey, what are you doing? You know, but that's what we do. Like, it's funny how I, I see this type of stuff now. But in verse 13, potentially, uh, it like potentially tells you like the whole warning of it. It says they did not wait on his counsel. And this is where we find like a major problem with waiting on God. If, you know, if you wait improperly on God, we'll literally search out people that help us to not wait on God. Like they can be Christians, they can be non-Christians, it could be a blog, it could be, uh, you know, your best friend's cousin whose aunt was an evangelistic missionary in her church. You know, we're going to look at everything. Basically, the desire of your heart is to get what you want now. And God's desire is you to wait because he's doing something else. And I'll get into stuff like that in, in later videos. But... You know, you can like literally search out people and it doesn't matter what they're doing. It doesn't matter like what their title is or anything like that. And you want to hear somebody tell you, well, you don't have to wait on God about that. You know, you can kind of just do that right now. But that's an improper uh, and unbiblical way to wait. You know, anytime you're waiting on God, you know, um, you want to search out what he wants, not what other people think first. Uh, because that's like spiritual trouble, you know, Satan sees that and that's like, it's, that's his opportunity to come in and do the same thing that he did to the children of Israel in the Red Sea, because you forget about what God has done for you. And if you're a new Christian and you watch this, salvation is the greatest part that God could ever do for anybody. And there's a lot that goes into that. That would be a whole video in itself. However, um, you know, like Satan sees that impatience and he goes and destroys the progress, process, and plan that God has in that waiting period. Because not all waiting is bad. Um, that's important to know. Not all waiting is bad. And I don't know how to emphasize that more, but again, not all waiting is bad. <laughs> um, you know, like that, that's how you get into the will of God in your life. You know, a majority of times God has you wait because the Bible says that we have need of patience. Like people always say, oh, well, don't pray for patience because, you know, God can send a trial. Let me tell you something. Trials are going to come regardless. You're going to learn how to wait regardless because that's the fruit of the spirit according to Galatians 5. You know, it doesn't matter if you say, oh, God, you know, you're know, you in fear now. Somebody, somebody told you that, so now you're afraid to pray for patience and the ability to comfortably wait on God and learn what God's doing. Like, that's the craziest thing that I've heard people say. 
And, uh, well, not well, yeah, thinking about what I've heard people say, that's that's definitely not the craziest, but it's unbiblical. Right? Well, the other ones are unbiblical, too. Yeah. Very disappointed. Um, but, you know, whatever. In verse 14, you know, it shows us, like, the devastation that took place because it shows us, it says, but they lusted the Israelites in the Red Sea and afterwards in the wilderness um, and that's us as well exceedingly in the wilderness and God tests and they tested God in the desert so okay so they they didn't just lust they lusted exceedingly lust lust what is lust lust is I don't know the top definition of lust but lust is wanting something you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting something, but there is some, something with uh, wanting something so bad that it's exceedingly. That's all you think about. That's all you want. That's all you look for. You know, every person you meet, oh, is this the person I'm supposed to marry? That's exceedingly, you know? Like, there's a speed limit that you have. Like, it can be 65, and it says, do not exceed. Why does it say, do not exceed? Because there's a there's a reason, there's a guideline, there's a law, there's a safety practices that have taken place that lets you know, hey, going 125 miles an hour is going to lead you to a destructive path. And that's really what God does. He helps us to understand what exceedingly is, you know, really about. And we don't want to get to the point where we're going 125 miles an hour spiritually, not waiting on God. We don't want to get to that point where exceedingly becomes devastation and that's an easy you can easily get there now i'm tempted to go into the whole thing but i'm not really going to do that um but you know god's reply was actually that he gave them their desire um even though it seems seems small or whatnot but um if you go into it it was like uh food <laughs> it was it was food literally like so if it can happen through food, it can happen through whatever you're thinking about right now, you know. So, and the funny thing is, it's like God didn't blame the devil. It says God, God gave them their desire. So God's not like us; He doesn't blame the devil. Um, he didn't do it for their destruction. Like I said, uh, you know, He was trying to correct them. He was trying to do all this, and it gave us an opportunity to look back and say, okay, well, what can I learn from that? Like I would rather learn from someone else's mistakes than go through my own, and then just uh, you know be at 125 miles an hour and i'm looking dead at a tree you know but uh, sometimes that's how i learn so i can teach other people you know? uh, so you know i enjoy the car crashes that i've been through and learn from them now like i said you know there's nothing wrong with waiting on anything but make sure your your heart and your mind isn't focused on that even if you get it like don't don't let that be your goal, you know, your end goal that you got something or that you're doing something, you know, whatever the case may be, because that just, it, it hinders you. Like, again, it's, again, I'll, I'll put it like a car. It's like, you're so focused on, okay, I got it or I want it that you, you know, you have two mirrors generally, you know, on a car generally. Even if you only got one, you're doing okay with this uh, with this uh, illustration. But there's a blind spot, you know. You don't realize always what's right there because you haven't looked back. And a lot of times we don't look back with God and see what he's done. So we don't recognize Satan coming up in the blind spot and we just get over. And what does it getting over represent? It represents getting out of the will of God, which is to wait on God to do something. But... Um, you know, I mean, think about it. You can't say like, oh, you know, I'm waiting on God, blah, 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 because that's, you know, my man, that's my wife, you know, and they're married. That's not in the Bible. You're not going to get that. God's not going to sit there and wait. Number one, God's not waiting, okay? But number two, you're waiting. And God's not going to sit there and wait. And, and, you know, somebody's married, you know, and, and, and you're like somehow you've got this prophetic word and, the Lord spoke to you and said, that's my, husband. no, no, he didn't. He didn't speak to you and say, that's your husband. If somebody's married. Okay. That's the devil. 
period. You know, but the thing, the real, um, I would say the real point here is the Bible says that he gave them their request. So God took full authority and responsibility for it. But the Bible says, but, so this also denotes the fact that God also did this. But he sent leanness to their soul. So you don't want to grow fat from whatever um, God has given you or whatever God may give you or just waiting and not really pursuing God. And then you look at your soul or your spiritual walk with God, your connection with God. And when I say God, I mean Jesus because Jesus is God. Anybody want to debate that? Uh, please feel free. You know, bring a Bible, bring, you, you know, your pastor, everybody. Because I can prove 100% with the Bible that Jesus is God. So if you want to, if you want to try that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I'm not really into debates, but when it comes to that, you know, any, any day, any, literally. So you don't want to have something that's going to eat you from the inside out. Like, you know, oh, I'm chewing up this, uh, this waiting process and you don't realize you're eating something to your own destruction. Like you're getting bigger. But you're not growing spiritually. You know, I've heard um, this is a very important topic for churches. You know, there's churches that grow wide. They grow in membership, but they don't grow deep. And deep represents like just the teaching of God's word. You know how hard it is to find a church that just teaches the Bible? Like just teach the Bible. Like I won't, I won't go into that. I just, I just can't. I can't go in because I'll fly off the hinges. You know, but um, this is definitely worthy of some more videos. So um, I just want to also give a little point that God sanctifies you while you're waiting. Um, and sanctification is just like a big word for like being set apart. I would say really, I mean, really it's just God making you more like Jesus. Um, who is God? Who walked on this earth? Okay, so Jesus is God. Again, I'll reiterate that because people want to attack the character of Jesus. If you notice, they don't attack any other gods. They just attack, there's no way that Jesus is deity, that he is God in human flesh. Um, so, like, again, I said, if you want to debate it, we can. Um, but, uh, you know, bring, bring what you need because I'm telling you, it's, you're going 125 miles an hour, you know. But, you know, it's just like a small thing to, to throw out there. Um, but, you know, I'm going to say a prayer for us uh, because we do need that. You know, and somebody might be watching this that really doesn't believe that Jesus is God. Um, because I don't think that came out of thin air. But let me say a prayer. Um, God, in Jesus' name, I pray for the individual watching this. I pray that they are going the correct spiritual speed limit, Lord, and their waiting process on you or their process of getting something from you. I pray that they don't exceed that limit because, you know, you have guidelines set to protect us, not to harm us, not to get us upset, not to get us angry, not to make us um, wait uh, in the wrong way or to, I mean... I don't know how to describe it, God. I pray that you just speak to the individual watching this and you help them to really understand what I can't say. Like, you can speak to them specifically and help their hearts to understand something that perhaps I'll never be able to say because that's your child, you know, or that could be your child. And all they have to do is believe to have you in their life God and just believe that you are God and that you died for our sins so God I pray that if there is someone that really wants to move towards that area and further into discipleship that you would help them with that God because unbelief is of the enemy he wants to stifle us with that as well and I pray Holy Spirit that you would just free us from things that are keeping us bound, things that perhaps we did go 125 miles and crash into something because we didn't wait. Um, I can think of one thing right off the gate. Um, and I thank you, God, that um, in the process thereof, 
You still have a plan. You're still in full control. You haven't lost control of the car. We may, but you haven't. So God, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, and remember, like, uh, one of the, the, the biggest blessings is, like, um, when it comes to waiting, is you're not just waiting on God, you're, you're learning to focus on God and to be in God's will. You know, don't miss out on watching God work in you and through you. Um, because, you know, we're going to miss out on some of the greatest blessings that we could ever see and witness in our own life. And perhaps someone's watching you and responding to how you wait. Um, so remember to not avoid one of the greatest blessings, which is actually depending on the promises of God. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope it like made some sense. Um, if not, I'm sorry. Um, maybe watch it again. I don't know. I'll try to, I will do more videos. Um, but I hope you enjoy this. And in order for me to do more videos, guess what you got to do? You got to wait. <laughs>